Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at what everyone thinks about rolling dice, downtime during the campaign, your favorite versions of lay on hands, players that aren't working out, and which materials you allow at your tables. And be sure to stay to the end if you want to see who shared the comment of the week. This week I posted five poll questions and received more than 3,000 responses and 100 comments. Kicking things off, I wanted to find out what everyone thought about rolling dice in Dungeons & Dragons. This one was really no contest. More than 60% said that they enjoy rolling dice and it makes the game interesting. Only 5% indicated that they prefer to roll as few dice as possible. This question came about because some of the responses I saw in other poll questions. It seemed that many people preferred to use the flat values for damage and proficiency and ability scores and would rather not allow for the randomness of dice. The results of this poll question definitely do not align with those comments. Dice are still considered an important part of Dungeons and Dragons. As for these comments, Bamboozled and Greg Turner both subscribe to the approach that dice rolls are great for players, but the flat results might be better for the dungeon masters. Jeff Lewis shared that dice rolls during the game are good, but during character creation, they can just arbitrarily put a player at a disadvantage and that's no fun. Mage Musings pointed out that avoiding those dice rolls might be tempting the fate of the universe, so tread carefully. And Tony Crenshaw had an interesting take. Sometimes the dice rolls are not about determining success or failure, but rather the level of performance. The example they gave is that a character was chopping firewood, and there was no need to roll to see if they would succeed because it was a fairly standard task, but the dice roll could be used to determine how much wood they chopped. I've used this approach on multiple occasions, and I think it works really good. I agree with the comments that you should only roll dice when there is a reason. If there's not a consequence of failing, then the dice roll has no purpose. But I also like to roll lots of dice, so I prefer the proficiency die over the flat bonus. I love the idea of exploding dice. I love features like bardic inspiration that allow for more dice to be rolled. So roll them only when necessary, but when that time does come, the more dice the better. Next, I wondered how everyone handled downtime in their campaigns. This would be things like shopping and crafting and such. I know every campaign is different, but I was curious about each person's general view. This one got a pretty even split across all the options. A third said that they roleplay everything, followed by those that rarely even use downtime. Looking at the comments, Pangoria does most of the downtime stuff in between sessions and just saves the final details for right before the session starts. Perchy finds that roleplaying it can come in handy when the dungeon master uses up everything that they had prepared, so it's a good opportunity to improv some social interactions. Sparkling Water will roleplay the downtime, but not the shopping that is saved for in-between sessions. I really liked Obi Senpai's approach. The character of a town is defined by the citizens that live there. Roleplaying the interactions with shopkeepers and other locals can help the party learn what the town is really about. You miss out on that if you just hand wave these interactions. As for me, I love to roleplay it at the table. It's part of the campaign. If the party wants to do some of it between sessions, then that's fine, but there can be a lot of fun in improving an encounter with some random shopkeeper. I also rarely follow the price lists in the books. I might use those as a guide, but nothing is ever priced exactly exactly as listed, the player interactions will help determine if they get a good deal or not. Those that have been following the live streams will know that I am building some 4th edition characters in preparation for a series of D&D 4th edition tutorial videos that I'm putting together. As part of this, I was looking at the Lay on Hands Paladin feature and it got me thinking about the different variations over the years, and I wondered which one did people like the most. Perhaps no surprise that most people, by a long shot, chose the 5th edition version, which is definitely the most powerful. You get a pool of hit points each day equal to 5 times your level. The other versions basically finish tied with 4th edition maybe having a slight edge. Not a ton of comments on this one. A few called out non-D&D games, and there was a brief side discussion about the structure of the classes in different versions. I like 4th edition's balance of simplicity and effectiveness. Healing surges were a super easy mechanic and always provided a set amount of hit points to be restored. It did limit how often you could use it each day, but this scaled as you leveled up. Then I got a little more serious and was curious if you ever had to ask someone to leave during a session. I had previously asked if anyone had left a session, but kicking someone out during a game might be even more difficult. Thankfully, more than 60% answered that things had never gotten that bad. It's wonderful to know that while there are some bad experiences out there, that is not the norm. And another 20% did not kick out players during the game, but they did ask them not to return. This sometimes happens. Not every table is a fit for everyone, so sometimes it's best to simply move on. About 10% had experiences that just had to be dealt with immediately. Some of the comments called out the specifics. Several people commented that they had personally left during a session for a variety of reasons, but had never kicked someone else out. Van Can pointed out a key problem is that we don't want to be rude even when the other person is being rude to us. So we stay silent and we suffer through it, which is unfortunate, but as long as we're being true to ourselves, then that's really what's most important. I personally have never had to kick somebody out in the middle of a game. The only time I bailed during a game was when one was running 
until 3 a.m. and the rest of the group was planning on continuing. I needed to get some sleep. Shortly after that, I left the group because that experience showed me that our play styles were not aligned. Before I get to the last question, remember that if you have a question you'd like me to put in front of the community, please drop that down in the comments and I might use it in a future poll. Finally, as I was looking through all the D&D material that's out there and thinking about the fact that we're about to get D&D 5.5 plus Tales of the Valiant, I wondered what kinds of limits folks put on what materials can be used in a game. Not surprisingly, more than two-thirds said that they will allow the official books and then some other stuff as long as they can review it first. I was surprised to see that 10% would allow pretty much anything. I know personally I am hesitant to allow homebrew since I've had experiences where players brought in some features that just did not play well with the rest of the table, and it can be really hard to back back away from those decisions in the middle of the campaign. Most of the comments on this one support the approach of allowing the official materials with other content being allowed at the DM discretion, the biggest concern being that some of it might be overpowered. And finally, the comment of the week comes from Handsome Longshanks in response to my question about whether anyone had to be asked to leave during a game. I very much appreciated their openness and acknowledging that they were the problem. They did not leave, but they were about to, and they tried to make amends for the situation as the campaign progressed. Looking at ourselves and taking steps to do better is all we can ask of anyone. Each experience shapes who we are. As long as we keep learning and improving, then we're doing okay. Thank you for that. And thank you to everyone that participated in the polls and took time to share your comments. It is always great to see where the community lands on a variety of topics. Until next time, take care.